Coming up on KUJH News, think these clouds look scary? There's a good reason for that. Brittany Foster will update you on today's Tornado Watch. And have you ever been caught on the road during a severe storm? There's a secret shelter that just may keep you safe. Plus, a hardware store in downtown Lawrence is closing after 113 years in business. I'm Ellis Wiltsey. And I'm Mackenzie Davis. All that and more coming up on KUJH News. From the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Douglas County is officially under a tornado watch until 10 p.m. Meteorologist Brittany Foster is live at the Kansas Turnpike to give us details on the storms. Brittany. Well, today was certainly a, oh, for now. Oh, today was certainly a warm and muggy day outside. Overall, fairly calm though for us, luckily. Later on tonight, the story is going to change as we head into the evening hours with severe weather that will start rolling into the area. You can already see it right now. Cloudy skies right now. Cumulus clouds are starting to thicken up in the area. You see with the gray color as they start to move in, that system approaches us. Right now, though, everything's fairly calm. Temperatures in the 80s at 83 degrees here in Lawrence. Very strong winds, though. As you can see, my hair is blowing around. Winds about 20 to 25 miles an hour with gusts up to about 40 or 30. So very windy as of now. But later on in the show, I'll tell you what to expect with the severe weather that's going to roll in fairly soon and the timeline for it later on. It's pretty terrifying to think of seeing a tornado when you're in the middle of nowhere on the highway. The Kansas Turnpike Authority has a plan if motorists need to take shelter. KUJH reporter Grant Stevens is live at the North Lecompton Exchange. Grant, where are they supposed to go during severe weather? You may not have heard of them before, but they're sure getting a lot of attention now. The Kansas Turnpike Authority has tornado shelters just like this one at 24 toll booth stations all across Kansas. With severe weather rolling in as we speak, it's important to know what's behind this door. If you're driving on the turnpike, what do you do in severe weather? And you never know when weather can pop up and, and it's, it's relatively flat, so there's not really any place to, to get out of the way of a tornado. Along the 236 mile route of the Kansas Turnpike, there are 24 hidden tornado shelters underground. If you're caught in bad weather, the Kansas Highway Patrol and the Kansas Turnpike Authority say to pull off the turnpike and into parking lots like these at the Lecompton Interchange. From there, it's a short walk to the underground bunkers. Originally, KTA built the shelters to house KTA employees working the toll booths, so the size of the shelter directly correlates with the size of the toll station. That doesn't mean it's off limits to the public. Quite the opposite. KTA wants any motorist to pull in and stay safe if severe weather starts to twist in front of you. I think it's really neat that they do have uh, tornado shelters along the turnpike given that we're in Tornado Alley. Now let me take you guys inside the shelter itself. It's behind this metal door here so I'll unlock it and we'll head down these stairs. Now once you're inside you'll notice it's a pretty tight squeeze. This shelter was designed to hold about 15 people. Now that's for the public and for the people that are working the stations. And what you'll find in here is a few emergency lights located to my left and to my right here, as well as a gallon of fresh water. Now that gallon is not a whole lot, but it should be enough to last people through anything that's blowing overhead. Now if I crouch down here, I'll show you what's inside this emergency container here. A little bit more creature comforts. We have blankets wrapped up inside plastic bags to protect them from getting wet, as well as flashlights, batteries, and radios, as well as an emergency first aid kit. Now, all of that combined, it's a perfect good little shelter that'll help people wait while the storm blows overhead. Live from underground, the Lecompton Exchange, Grant Stevens, KS KUJH News. Kansas lawmakers are working to finalize the state budget and universities are paying close attention. Both the House and Senate have proposed plans to add funding to the state's university system. In 2016, college funding across the state took a 4% cut, resulting in a loss of about $24 million. Although both proposals don't fully restore the cuts, leaders in the Capitol think it's a good start. They need to work fast because the legislative session comes to a close on Friday. Imagine spending big bucks on an at-home DNA test. You swab your cheeks, send it in, only to find out the results are not accurate. KJH reporter Ian Saucy has more on how some say these tests can indicate that you have genetic disorders when you don't. They cost $200 and they claim to tell you if you are genetically predisposed 
for breast cancer, prostate cancer, diabetes, or Alzheimer's. But a recent survey conducted by the American Council on Science and Health says that 40% of the time, the results turn out to be false positives. FDA approval is what 23andMe keeps saying that they have, and that's really just saying that they have the permission to do some of this testing, not necessarily that their results are accurate. The way it works is that you spit into this tube all the way up to the line and send it in. It can tell you about your ancestry and personalized data, but some doctors worry that people will read the report and make medical decisions without consulting a doctor first. So you're telling people that they have all these things, which they probably don't. It also isn't always telling you if it's a variant versus actually harmful um, versus just a normal human mutation. When patients bring in the results, Cox says that she has to explain to them that most of the mutations are harmless. The absence of an explanation leads to some to believe that they will develop multiple diseases. She says that if patients are truly worried, have a doctor order a test in a professional lab. To receive the best treatment, it is important to speak with your doctor. The kits also don't prepare your customers for the psychological toll of finding out if they have a predisposition for a certain disease. In Lawrence, Ian Saucy, KUJH News. These kits only provide one piece of information about your health, other lifestyle choices, and family history can also increase a person's risk of developing some disorders. After nearly 113 years, Ernest & Sons Hardware is planning to close on June 1st. The store first closed when owner Rodney Ernest died in January, but the family reopened the store in February. Ernest family members say they wish they could continue to run the shop, but they just can't do it. The door, doors originally opened back in 1905. Coming up on KUJH News, a military cargo plane went down in Georgia and there are fatalities. We have the latest details of the crash. And the Boy Scouts will no longer be known as the Boy Scouts. We'll tell you about the organization's newest name change. Stay with us. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Nope. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom. That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. I got no balls, so I'm losing. Shocking drives up road all the time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed. You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. You'll be fine. Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Shocking. Get caught buzz driving. And you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Weather headlines today are very interesting. We had today that warm and very sticky feeling in the air today and very high winds, matter of fact. Later on this evening, it's going to change as that severe weather chance increases and those storms start to move into the area. And then this weekend, though, it's not seems like it's going to be fairly well. It's going to be nice sunny skies and temperatures are going to dip down just a little bit, not in the 80s, but actually in the upper 70s. But overall, fairly nice. But let's get serious now and talk about the chance for severe weather. Here's your evening forecast. By 5 o'clock, we are still going to be holding on to temperatures in the upper 80s, or lower 80s, sorry. And then going into 7 o'clock, we'll be in the upper 70s. But 9 p.m., when things start to change, temperatures will drop. The severe weather will roll in, and that's when the chances for hail and even tornadic activity moves into the area. 
Here's your SPC storm outlook. Out of the five categories that we have to rank supercells or storms in general, we are ranked enhanced for the Lawrence area, and this is actually updated earlier today to get us into this enhanced risk as things have changed. And then looking at your updated forecast, this is a model that is showing what it's thinking the storms will be like later on today. Uh, we have storms that started to grow around 3 o'clock, and as they increase, you can see they start to move eastward into the Lawrence area, and they will be in our area around 6 or to 8 o'clock tonight in general, and they will wrap up about 10 o'clock and be officially out of the area, only leaving rain for the Lawrence area. Here's what you can expect, though. Hail, wind, and flooding also due to the heavy periods of rainfall with these storms that is associated with them. Evening commute will be affected depending on when you leave work, and also there is a small uh, a uh, chance for tornadic activity as well. Uh, going along with storm threats, wind damage is high. All the remaining ones are fairly low, just with medium risk. And then going into your stop day forecast, fairly nice for your Friday, beautiful weather overall. And then Mass Street also for your weekend forecast. Your seven day forecast looks to be fairly nice as well. 80s for this weekend and then start of the new work week. We cool back down going into the upper 70s. Back to you. Let's take a quick look at other stories making news across the nation. It's official Mike Pompeo is the new Secretary of State. President Trump himself chose to attend the ceremonial swearing in today with Vice President Mike Pence leading the oath. Pompeo replaces Rex Tillerson, the man Trump fired in March after months of policy clashes. Pompeo says he promises to reinvestigate that State Department and restore what he calls its swagger. The U.S. Air Force says a military plane crashed a few miles away from an air airport in Georgia. The National Guard confirmed that five people died in the accident. A spokesperson at the Savannah Hilton Head International Airport says emergency crews are still at the site of the crash. The airport tweeted that the accident may mean some commercial flights face delays. The Boy Scouts of America will drop the word boy from the name of its signature program, doubling down on its quest to become the scouting organization of choice for boys and girls. The program for kids aged 11 to 17 becomes Scouts BSA beginning in February 2019. They'll also be adopting the slogan, Scout Me In. The Cub Scouts program for children will keep its name and the parent organization will keep the name Boy Scouts of America too. And that's your look at a news from across the nation. Well, let's hope the severe weather and tornadoes don't stop any weather or stop don't stop any games this weekend. Well, luckily Hopefully. for baseball, they're not in the state of Kansas tonight. They'll be they're over in, at Missouri State playing, so their game is going to go on tonight. But coming up on sports, tennis makes the NCAA tournament for the third straight season. Final. <laughs> hometown pride. Eat local, drink local, shop local. Do you know that you're in my lane? No, not at all. Are you not paying attention? Are you texting? I was just checking in with my mom. I was telling her that I thought we'd be home by six. It's okay. There's enough time. Just pay attention. I'm not even halfway through my text. There's no way. I'm not even going to look up. My babies are in the car. You have to pay attention. It's just supposed to be a quick text. I'm so sorry. For the third straight year, Kansas tennis is going to the NCAA tournament. After finishing fourth in the Big 12, the Jocks waited to hear their name called as an at-large bid. So where are they going? Beautiful Malibu, California to take on Denver. There is a lot of familiarity between these two teams as they have faced each other the last two seasons. Well, we've, we've played them uh, in some form or fashion every year for the last four years. 
Uh, we played them a few years ago back to back, home and away. And then last year we were at a fall event with them where we kind of did a, a scrimmage type atmosphere as far as how you play it. So we've, we're definitely very familiar with their team and they're very familiar with us. Yeah, we know what we're going to bring. We know what they're going to bring. So I think it's going to be a good battle. Jacks go on to beat the Pioneers. They will take on host Pepperdine for a berth in the Sweet 16. Monday night marked the end of the academic year for many senior student athletes at the University of Kansas. The seniors participated in the annual K Ring Ceremony. The three most recognizable seniors who have made an impact on Kansas athletics are Kelsey Payne, Devontae Graham, and Laura Taylor. Payne was a two-time All-American and Big 12 first team and was also named Big 12 Player of the Year in 2016. Graham cemented himself as one of the top players in the nation after he was named a consensus first team All-American, Big 12 Player of the Year, and finalist for the Naismith Award. Taylor will leave her legacy as one of the best pole vaulters in KU history after earning first team All-American in an indoor season, winning the Big 12 championship and setting the Andrews facility record. Do not be surprised if we see these three succeed on the professional level in the future. While our shows are coming to the end here, we have to end the spring season, go through a couple of the events that are coming up in the next couple of weeks. Here are some events to watch the rest of the semester. Baseball takes on West Virginia this weekend, looking to end their 11-game winless streak. Softball looks to salvage their season against Iowa State and trying to sweep the series to advance to the postseason. And of course, Big 12 championships and NCAA championships for track as the men's team is currently ranked 15th and the women's team ranked 22nd. Are you, do you enjoy tailgating, roaring engines, trucks passing by you at over 200 miles per hour, then get ready for the season opener at the Kansas Speedway on May 11th. While these is still 10 days away, our reporter Phil Meschke was invited to the media ride along to capture the excitement. Let's see which media representatives he ran into. I am the sports director for KCTV5 and I also am the radio sideline reporter for the Chiefs. So after it was all said and done, I ended up hitting a little over 144 miles per hour and I was challenging a bunch of the guys that I was out here with to be faster than me. Unfortunately, I ended up finishing like third or fourth, which is okay, but if you're not first, you're last. I cannot imagine doing that with 40 other cars around. Oh, no. true. And I can't oh, imagine hours. doing that for three hours. And another probably 40 miles on, an hour on top. I've never oh, even yeah. been to a NASCAR race or to a speedway uh, of this magnitude, by much less in a race car like that. And I really thought I was gonna be riding along. I did not intend to drive because I haven't driven a stick shift since I was 16. I'm a fast driver. I love it. Now this is a great time. I love being out here. This is so much fun. My heart's racing. Oh, it's still racing. Too, yeah. Pun intended. It's racing. <laughs> Race weekend is set for Friday, May 11th with the NASCAR Truck Series and Saturday, May 12th for the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series under the lights. Brittany, that is the last sports of the year and the last segment of my time here at KU. I hope you all enjoyed the ride along with me. Due to how severe these storms are expected to be tonight, I figured to show you the uh, evening forecast just one more time to show you the timeline of what's expected to happen. By 5 o'clock, we're going to be sitting in temperatures in the 80s, and going into 7 o'clock, we'll be sticking around in temperatures in the upper 70s. But 9 o'clock is when things start to change, and temperatures will drop, and the severe weather will officially be in the Lawrence area. That's when hail will become a threat, along with even tornadic activity and thunder and all other things expected, along with severe weather. Going into your safety plans, make sure you have three different ways to get in weather information, whether it's your phone, your laptop, or even the old radio. Make sure you have many ways to get in this information. Also, make sure you have a plan ready. If you do need to go to the basement, if there's a tornado in the Lawrence area, make sure you are ready and getting those weather alerts to know when you need to go down into that safety shelter. Also, don't forget to go down just or here, go down when you hear the sirens, go down a little bit ahead of time. Overall, stay safe tonight, everyone. Back to you. Lastly today, a record-breaking fleet of more than 1,300 glowing drones danced above the city wall of Shan, China. The light show mixed a rich culture with the charm of technology. Together, the drones flew to form Chinese characters as well as traditional icons and images. It only required one person to control the synchronized dance, a challenging task, but one they pulled off with flying colors. It broke the previous drone record set at the Winter Olympics earlier this year. One person, holy moly, I can barely work my phone. <laughs> that's great, yeah, China I wish. All the cool technology. <laughs> and that's your KUJH News for Wednesday, May 2nd. Thank you for tuning in all semester. To see our stories again or to share them with your friends, check out our website at tv.ku.edu. We leave you today with more video from the Kansas Speedway from videographer Phil Meshke. KUJH will be back next August. Have a great summer.